Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. History isn't just marked with feuds and rivalries. In some ways, history is a product of them. Some beefs have shaped civilization and changed the course of society. Some of these complex, deep, and contentious relationships have profoundly altered the path of human progress, from politics to war to art, all the way to science. Think of Aaron Burr versus Alexander Hamilton in the early days of the United States. In engineering, Ferrari versus Lamborghini. In the cartoon world, there's Tom versus Jerry. In music, Biggie versus Tupac. From philosophy, man versus nature. Everyone knows Tesla versus Edison. However, I wouldn't personally call this one a beef. The relationship between Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison is less of a rivalry and more of hero and villain. That story is simple, in my opinion. Edison was scum. He killed an elephant just to demonstrate his competitor's alternating current electricity was dangerous and to be a dick. So no deep dive required, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of that man. Edison was a thief and an exploiter, and he was overrated as an inventor. He wasn't half the man Tesla was. The focus of today's episode, one of the grandest rivalries or beefs, comes from the world of physics, from probably the most important science project in world history, the Manhattan Project. This project changed the course of the world, and two brilliant, idiosyncratic, and opinionated personalities were at the center. Oppenheimer and Teller aren't exactly household names, but they should be. These men were important in defining a whole new era in global politics through their ideas, through their inventions. During World War II, Edward Teller and J. Robert Oppenheimer were key in the development of the atomic bomb. These scientists worked together and made magic become a reality. They did the impossible and split the atom developing a technology that would position the United States as the premier superpower in the world for decades and change the entire face of war and global politics. Teller and Oppenheimer were working on the same team, but they didn't see the world in the same way. Their feud would destroy both of their promising careers just when they should have taken off. This story isn't very well known, but it feels familiar. In my younger days, I was strictly in the Oppenheimer camp and thought Edward Teller was just a jealous warmonger. I heard scientists refer to him as the Judas of physics, who falsely accused Robert Oppenheimer of being a communist at the height of the Red Scare. My opinion has shifted over the years. Learning more has shown me this story is more complicated, like a lot of stories. They were very different men, but they both have something very important to teach us. Both world-class intellects, both creative, intelligent men who loved their country. They were forces for freedom and science, but had different opinions about what was best. J. Robert Oppenheimer was born in April of 1904. Leading up to the war, he was an American theoretical physicist and professor at the University of California, Berkeley. Cultured, worldly, well-read, he was a tall chain smoker from a rich, well-to-do aristocratic family. Oppenheimer was known for being sometimes too enthusiastic in discussions, sometimes to the point of taking over and infuriating everyone. Edward Teller had a very different background. Born a few years later in Budapest, Hungary in 1908, he did not come from great wealth or privilege. Not quite Oliver Twist, but not rich like Oppenheimer. His mom was a pianist and his father, Max Teller, was an attorney. Edward Teller was well known in scientific circles for his brilliance and creativity. He was an immigrant with a deep devotion to the protection of the United States. He was a staunch supporter of Western ideas, and his time in Europe made him deeply afraid of the spread of communism and fascism. Teller was also known for his ruthlessness when it came to his career and his ideas. Also, his Machiavellianism in pursuit of his goals and competition with other scientists. He was sometimes called a monomaniac with many manias. Throughout his life, Teller was known for his scientific ability, for his difficult interpersonal relationships, and for his volatile personality. Like Edward Teller, 
J. Robert Oppenheimer was known for being, shall we say, a bit crazy. He was known to often forego eating during periods of intense thought and concentration. Many of his friends described him as having self-destructive tendencies. A rather famous episode was documented from his days as a physics student at Cambridge. This helps to cement the crazy in Oppenheimer's reputation. He was on vacation in Paris and suffered a serious bout of depression. At one point during the trip, he actually physically assaulted one of his friends in an unprovoked attack. Oppenheimer was said to have just tried to kill his colleague out of nowhere, jumping on him and trying to strangle him, and he refused to offer any explanation to anyone after the episode was over. Although his colleague fended off the attack, the episode convinced him and others that Oppenheimer had deep psychological troubles. In 1926, he left Cambridge to study in Germany under famed scientist Max Born. The University of Göttingen was one of the world's leading centers for theoretical physics. Oppenheimer made several friends who also went on to great success in the field, including Werner Heisenberg, Paul Dirac, and Edward Teller. A few years later, Oppenheimer and Teller would meet again. Teller moved to the United States in the 1930s as part of a group of prominent Hungarian scientists known informally as the Martians. He, Robert Oppenheimer, and hundreds of the best minds in physics from around the globe flocked to the United States to take part in the most important and most secret science experiment ever, the Manhattan Project. Robert Oppenheimer was selected by the president and high-level U.S. military to lead the development. Teller was hired by Oppenheimer as one of his first key recruits in the new laboratory in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Teller became part of the theoretical physics division, the T division. He was given a secret identity with the name Ed Tilden. Teller was grateful for the position, but also a bit irked and insulted at being passed over for a higher role in the project. Oppenheimer wanted to take the concept of fission bombs, make them smaller and cause less widespread destruction. He wanted to use them as a more targeted weapon against invading armies. Teller was focused on the much more powerful fusion bomb and the concept of nuclear deterrence. It was fission versus fusion, a targeted approach versus total annihilation of the enemy. Oppenheimer and Teller were competing actively for the same resources from the same government. But Oppenheimer was sitting in a higher rank. The Manhattan Project was a frightening success. The first massive experimental blast radiated across the Nevada desert and changed history. It was far more powerful than anyone predicted. Oppenheimer said, after the Trinity bomb test, we knew the world would not be the same. A few people laughed, a few cried, most people were silent. I remember the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty, and to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now, I have become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that, one way or another. Edward Teller spoke at the same time, saying, I don't want to kill anybody. I am passionately opposed to killing but I'm even more passionately fond of freedom. This is when things got crazy between them. Ego is what so many times gets us. Great intellects are certainly not immune to the toxic effects of vanity. In this case, Teller was also deeply, and for good reason, in terror of fascism and where he thought communism was headed. There were rumors about Robert Oppenheimer, but there were rumors about a lot of people at the time. Edward Teller pointed the finger at his boss, Robert Oppenheimer. During the height of the Red Scare, Teller told everyone he was a communist and couldn't be trusted. Teller really thought Oppenheimer was dangerous. When asked about Oppenheimer's actions and affiliations, Teller stated, In a great number of cases, I have seen Dr. Oppenheimer act in a way which for me was exceedingly hard to understand. I thoroughly disagreed with him in numerous issues, and his actions frankly appeared to me confused and complicated. To this extent, I feel that I would like to see the vital interest of this country in hands which I understand better, and therefore trust more. 
I would feel personally more secure if public matters would rest in others' hands. Oppenheimer's security clearance was revoked. Teller's testimony was seen as a great betrayal by most scientists at the time, who supported Oppenheimer and believed Teller was acting out of professional jealousy. Teller himself was probably damaged more by his testimony than Oppenheimer. Close friends stopped talking to him, and one former colleague publicly refused to shake his hand. This reportedly led Teller to retire to his room and weep. Oppenheimer's colleagues and students usually fell into two extreme camps, those who saw him as an insecure and pretentious poser and those who idolized him. Edward Teller fell into the former group. Oppenheimer was an unconventional man who was misunderstood and disliked by others besides Teller. He was far from perfect and had plenty of enemies throughout his life. Oppenheimer was plagued by periods of depression and he once told his brother, I need physics more than friends. Both men believed in questioning held belief using the scientific method and free inquiry. Oppenheimer once said, we do not believe any group of men adequate enough or wise enough to operate without scrutiny or without criticism. We know that the only way to avoid error is to detect it, and the only way to detect it is to be free to inquire. This is one area where the two men's views converged. Teller once said, I hate doubt, yet I am certain that doubt is the only way to approach anything worth believing in. One important quote from Robert Oppenheimer, knowledge cannot be pursued without morality. He also said, no man should escape our universities without knowing how little he knows. Oppenheimer left the U.S. for the Virgin Islands and abandoned nuclear research to take part in the anti-proliferation movement. He lived only a few years longer and spent that time shut out of his great love, physics. Edward Teller stayed in the scientific community for quite some time, but his reputation never recovered. Some biographers refer to his treatment by other scientists as an unofficial exile. Even though he was ostracized by much of the academic community, he was still quite welcome in the government and military science circles. Teller eventually became a lobbyist and strong proponent for nuclear energy. He was hit with a heart attack in 1979 and blamed it on who else but Jane Fonda. Her anti-nuke movie, The China Syndrome, had just come out in theaters after the Three Mile Island incident, and this film caused Edward Teller great distress. He claimed the movie was so horrible and the Hollywood lies were so insidious that viewing it nearly killed him. He signed a two-page spread in the July 31st issue of the Wall Street Journal with the fabulous headline, I was the only victim of Three Mile Island. It opened with, on May 7th, a few weeks after the accident at Three Mile Island, I was in Washington. I was there to refute some of that propaganda that Ralph Nader, Jane Fonda, and their kind are spewing in the news media in their attempt to frighten people away from nuclear power. I am 71 years old, and I was working 20 hours a day. The strain was too much. The next day, I suffered a heart attack. You might say that I was the only one whose health was affected by that reactor near Harrisburg. No, that would be wrong. It was not the reactor. It was Jane Fonda. Reactors are not dangerous. Teller was rumored to be the inspiration for the character Dr. Strangelove in Stanley Kubrick's 1964 film. In a Scientific American interview from 1999, he got snippy with a reporter about it, saying, My name is not Strangelove. I don't know about Strangelove. I'm not interested in Strangelove. I heard these stories about Teller and I was in the camp of people who wrote him off as brilliant, but mostly crazy. And a mean old bastard. But there is a lot more to Edward Teller than that. He once said, We must learn to live with contradictions, because they lead to deeper and more effective understanding. Teller was one of the first prominent people to raise alarm to the danger of climate change. At an address to the membership of the American Chemical Society in December 1957, Teller warned that the large amount of carbon-based fuel that had been burnt since the mid-19th century was increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which he said would act in the same way as a greenhouse and raise the temperature at the surface. In 1996, while he was in the hospital for just having a stroke, 
one of the nurses asked him, Are you the famous Edward Teller? He responded, No, I'm the infamous Edward Teller. Many have said that in pursuit of his obsession with bombs, he wasted his great scientific gifts and potential and failed to become a truly great scientist. He may have shared this fate with his nemesis, Robert Oppenheimer. Before the war, both Oppenheimer and Teller made significant contributions to science. Teller is so famous for his weapons work that it, people forget about his early scientific research. Another very significant Teller contribution is known to solid-state chemists as the Jan Teller effect. Both seem seduced by power. Oppenheimer and Teller seem to forget what had brought them to this most important juncture in history. Tragedy fell on both men. What would they have accomplished? What if war and politics hadn't come between them? Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.